Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for having me here today. I'm excited to talk about this topic with everyone at the conference. Uh, it's interesting these days doing virtual conferences, but I think this is an especially timely topic. And I know that uh, Medidata and everyone on the patient cloud team has been working hard all year to be able to support the kind of needs our industry has because of COVID. So today, I'm going to focus on uh, some of the effects of the pandemic on clinical research studies in general, and then try to zero in a little bit in the, in the second half of the talk around some of the product solutions that are available to address uh, this situation and hopefully um, other situations in the future where uh, study virtualization uh, may be advantageous to, to sites and patients. Uh, so my name is Anthony Costello. I'm the Senior Vice President of Mobile Health at Medidata. And um, we are very focused on bringing all types of clinical research technology to the hands of patients. And everything that we build on the patient cloud team is for patients to use directly on a, on a clinical research study. So obviously, many of the products and, and services that we focus on um, have become quite heavily used this year. And, and I want to touch on that in today's talk. So again, thanks a lot for being here. And I'm going to jump right in. So first of all, if you haven't seen the white papers published by Medidata throughout the year, um, we've, we've been able to do some really interesting analysis across lots and lots of different research studies. You see here 4,600 clinical trials, uh, 182,000 study sites and visits um, were looked at in, in our data analysis. And, and really what we were trying to do was take the fact or use the fact that Medidata technology is used across so many different sites and countries and clinical trial indications that we felt like we could uh, really help deliver to the market some interesting metrics around the effects of, of the pandemic. What, what's happening out there on studies? How, how is the pandemic having an effect on patients who may be quarantined or unable to travel to sites? Uh, and, and sites are obviously being overly burdened uh, with the effects of COVID and with patients um, coming with COVID disease or being in emergency room overload mode uh, with lots of the COVID needs, you know, it was particularly challenging for sites to be able to conduct their regular visit schedule. So uh, we, took, we took a look at all of this data uh, in the metadata platform, standardized the views, looked across indications, looked across ge uh, geographic locations, looked across demographic um, indicators and so on to try to really average out the data. And, and, and here's what we found, you know, some very interesting, um, I think it's, it's fair to say industry-wide um, quantitative metrics related to the impact globally uh, of the pandemic. And if you look here at April 2019 versus um, 2020, you see an overall across, you know, all different kinds of indications and so forth, you see an overall decline it's by 79% by in terms of clinical trial recruitment um, and, and site visits. So, you know, a huge impact by, by any measure. Uh, this is a huge drop. Obviously, there could be other factors here, but the predominant factor at work uh, in, in, in these metrics is the impact of COVID and, and what COVID kind of did to, uh, to the clinical research trials that were ongoing or those that were starting up and trying to recruit. Um, and here on the right side of the screen, you can see a little bit of a study indication breakdown. Um, probably not a lot of interesting messaging, you know, in these numbers, but just 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 to make the point that overall, you know, ranging from you know a 60% decrease in oncology for some obvious reasons, like many many of the patients in these types of trials just simply can't miss their site visits, um, all the way up to you know cardiovascular showing a 95% decrease year over year uh, from April to just a year ago. So you know, big impact. Um, and when you break this down over some of the countries, especially countries that were particularly impacted by COVID, but also in many of these cases, countries that are particularly um, heavily used in terms of clinical trials and, and have a lot of research sites and a lot of ongoing studies. Um, so if you look at the blue line here in all these graphs, that's a representation of all of 2019. So the 2019 average would be baseline in this blue line here. And then what you see in the green line is change from that 2019 baseline. So for the United States, for example, you see in April a drop almost down 50% from 2019 baseline. And then you can kind of see that starting to come back up, but never actually getting 
back to 2019 levels. Um, some of the other countries, you know, UK, for example, had a particularly egregious drop early in the pandemic, um, still hasn't recovered. And then some, some countries like China, uh, Germany, and even Spain just kind of kissing the edge of 2019 there, if you will. Um, th these are countries that maybe went through the pandemic a little earlier and have started to, to show a little bit of a recovery and have come back even in some cases to be over 2019 levels. So, you know, what does this all mean? I think um, a lot has changed during the last six or seven months of all of these countries and trials and, and pharmaceutical, the whole industry really trying to figure out how to re-gear around the pandemic and, and rethink the way that data capture happens in this industry. And a lot of different products come into play during this thinking. If you're starting to think seriously about how do we virtualize a study, how do we bring more data capture outside of a site and put it in the hands of patients um, so that we can continue to collect data and engage patients throughout something like a COVID pandemic. Um, there's lots of different products that uh, kind of become uh, paramount in everybody's thinking, protocol design, uh, and the way they're trying to or orchestrate the, the, um, you know, the, the ways that the logistics on those trials can work. So some of these are more or less familiar to our industry, ECOA, EPRO. These technologies have been around for a long time. Lots of studies use ECOA and EPRO today, even before the pandemic. And, and I think that sometimes it's easy to forget that by using those kinds of technologies, you are starting to virtualize your study a little bit. You are making things easier on patients. You're putting apps in the hands of patients. You're collecting real-time data. In many cases, you may be preventing a site visit from needing to happen for that patient or, or at the very least reducing the time of a site visit because those data capture come in remotely. Um, E-consent, another technology that's been around for several years, but much more heavily used during COVID. And I think the COVID pandemic has really provided a catalyst for their use of e-consent in a lot of ways. Um, telemedicine, very rarely used in clinical research until the last year, I would say. And now you're starting to see lots of different telemedicine solutions, um, lots of different companies that are experimenting with virtual visits or remote visits so that a patient who may be quarantined at home can still make their site visit and engage, engage with the doctor and the, or the clinical tr trial staff on that study and, and be able to, um, you know, keep up with the, with the, um, with the requirements of that protocol visit. Uh, and then wearable sensors, another, you know, interesting mobile health technology that our industry has, you know, dabbled in, I would say, over the last decade, uh, but during COVID, huge uptick in interest in wearable sensors and really starting to think about everything from can a wearable sensor and a validated algorithm help us predict COVID cases, um, all the way from there to just, you know, can we collect more quantitative empirical data from these devices that limit the amount of time a patient needs to spend in a site or maybe even the time a patient needs to spend providing those data through a handheld device or, or a questionnaire that they're filling out. Uh, so lots of different point solutions that can be used typically across multiple vendors if implemented at all in a clinical trial. It's rare to see uh, many of these different capabilities used on a single study and, and certainly rare to see them all used under a single vendor. So really when you add it all up, what we're starting to see is a pattern that looks kind of like what the picture here we're depicting in this slide. Um, the idea is that you could have a traditional trial like the one here way on the left-hand side where most of the data comes from the hospital or study site and maybe a little bit, if any, from the home, all the way to the other extreme where you're really running a completely virtual trial, almost no data coming in from the study site, and very high on data coming in from, from the home. So, um, you know, and anything in between. And really what Medidata has tried to do over the last year, and I think we're not alone in this, is try to address all those studies that fall somewhere in the middle. So this little dial across the bottom of the slide is a concept we created and we call it the trial dial. And the idea behind the trial dial is just that we want customers and partners and, and folks that are delivering clinical research protocols and, and planning these trials to be able to think about any level of virtualization from almost none on the left side of this slide to a completely virtual study on the right side. Uh, think of that as a continuum of virtualization. And we are focused on developing a product line 
uh, and a way for you to deliver almost any aspect of virtualization that you want along this continuum of, of, of the trial dial. So our idea behind this is obviously in a pandemic, there's some clear reasons why you might want virtualized technology to be able to keep things on the rails. Um, but even in a normal trial, we believe that you can significantly reduce patient burden and get better, more real-time accurate data capture by using a lot of the capabilities that I talked about a couple slides back and trying to get to the point where virtualization is a part of every study that you do. Um, and, you know, our driver for this and, and the reason that we began focusing on a mobile health program six or seven years ago is because Rave EDC is used so heavily at the sites and Rave EDC really becomes the underpinnings for a lot of data capture, data collection, data analysis on many of the world's clinical trials. We believe that it puts us in an in a advantageous position to develop the patient-facing tools that go along with RAVE and work with RAVE and are completely integrated with RAVE and really start to provide the sites uh, on a RAVE platform and the patients on a patient platform um, all under one single vendor, one single roof. So we call this patient-facing product My MyMedidata. Uh, we rolled out My MyMedidata in its first versions this year. It is entirely based on the RAVE platform and it's meant to address what we consider to be the key parts of a patient journey through clinical research. So when a patient uh, decides to do a clinical trial, um, that is one moment in their lifetime, uh, their lifetime of, of health needs and of looking at clinical research as a care option. And they're really trying to address an aspect of this journey from finding a study, learning about it, consenting to be in the trial, all the different aspects of data capture, and then coming out of that trial and having long-term access to their data, their consent information, and, and maybe even the ability to roll into a registry so that they can find the next trial. Many patients do more than one trial, but we don't really have a lot of great tools in this industry to follow a patient before a study, during a study, after that study, and even into the next study. My MediData was designed to be that single patient platform uh, with a product line that uh, addresses all different aspects of this patient journey. So just quickly, if you look at the patient cloud tools that we've always offered at MediData and the mobile health team, eConsent, eCOA, some capabilities around virtual trials and our wearable sensor program, what we've added to the My MediData platform this year is a video visits capability that we call My MediData Live because it's meant to encourage any video live interaction happening between sites and patients during a study. Uh, and then we're adding at the end of this year and into 2021, lots of new functionality that we've never had before at MediData, including a lot of patient registry capabilities to be able to accommodate those patients before their study and after their study. Uh, we do lots of large uh, mega trials that wanna roll patients into a registry for long-term follow-up and, and so on. Um, we're beginning to work in the area of patient recruitment using My MediData as a way to help those patients that are involved in the registry find future trials that are a good fit for them. Um, and then we've launched a really important program in patient data return so that we can help our sponsors and our sites share data back with patients at the end of the trial and make sure that those patients have the ability to access that data on my MediData even after the study has closed and, and the sites are all locked in, and shut down. So again, you know, COVID has taught us a lot this year. It's been uh, a year for flexibility. It's been a, a year for trying new things. And I think um, even though the patient centricity movement's been going on for a long time, I think people thinking about patient centricity has really gelled this year. And I think our industry has had an opportunity to really try harder, if you will, to kind of up the ante on how we take care of patients, look out for patient burden, provide technology for patients, and try to virtualize these studies, um, you know, for, for, for the good of all of us that are trying to run the, the trials in the most efficient way we can. Um, so, you know, just a few key takeaways. It is true, in, in our opinion, after analyzing thousands of protocols, that most studies will fit some kind of a hybrid approach. It's very unlikely that most studies will become fully virtual, but using a little bit of virtualized technology, like a sensor or a video visit or an, a remote consent uh, or a remote ePro app, very possible uh, on almost every study. Um, 
And there can be, if you find ways to virtualize your, your trials, there can be some significant cost reductions for those budgets and also some very important and significant burden reductions for the patients. Even just being able to miss a visit here or there or call into a video visit instead of making a trip to the site in person, um, these types of reductions in burden can really make a difference for a patient, especially on long trials and especially during something like a quarantine. Um, platform, platform standardization can provide a lot of scalability and repeatable results. Uh, many of you who use mobile health technologies today are kind of scattering those technologies across lots of vendors, creating a lot of integration challenges, a lot of challenges every time somebody updates their app or changes their underlying EDC platform in some way. Um, so the approach that we've chosen to take of offering all of these capabilities on a single My Metadata platform that works hand in glove with RAVE at the sites, we, we really think it is a winning approach and has started to show a lot of the benefits that people want to be able to get out of mobile health technologies and, and out of virtualized trials. Um, unprecedented situations like COVID uh, provide uh, the need to accelerate adoption in these areas. Uh, and I think we've seen that. And we, I, I think we've also started to see some positive results that hopefully will allow um, these kinds of technologies to continue being used as we come out of the COVID pandemic. Um, and then the last point I'd like to make just, um, you know, we have had a very favorable regulatory environment in, in, in many different countries, in the U.S. Uh, as well as Europe, um, a very favorable regulatory approach to trying new things and looking for ways because of COVID and because of the real challenges COVID was presenting for ongoing studies and study enrollment like we showed in the beginning of this talk. Um, and, and there's a lot of opportunity now to kind of continue movement in that direction. Um, the, the regulatory flexibility could be continued. Uh, the pharma interest in offering these kinds of technologies hopefully will be continued. And certainly from all the work that we're doing with patients, we know for sure that the patient interest in using this te these technologies on the types of studies that they're doing, um, very well received and certainly something that patients want to see our industry continue uh, to develop in the future. Uh, so I'll just end with a quick plug for a group that has kick-started in the last few weeks in the United States. States, um, no going back dot health, and I, I encourage all of you to go check out this website. It's a way to give a little bit of a pledge to the idea that all the momentum we got with clinical trials technology during COVID should be continued, and, and it's a way to kind of say, yes, I want to support continuing these types of technologies for, for the good of my studies, but also for the good of patients all, all over the world. So um, I'll end there. Just wanted to thank you once again for participating in this conference. Um, uh, there, there is a live session of Q&A, so we'll be supporting that. And again, my name is Anthony Costello, uh, Senior Vice President from Medidata. Thanks very much for your time today. Um, be safe, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference.